What's up everyone? It's Toy House here and the day has come. I've finally gotten my epic flying mount. Now I want to show you guys how long it took. So you can see here on June 1st, we, uh, we, we started playing the Burning Crusade. It was released. I had about 674 gold and you can see a meteoric rise. This is actually just leveling. And I leveled tailoring, which might have been a mistake. And then as you can see, we uh, just made our way all the way up there until I bought my Epic Flying Mount and now I'm broke as a joke, but I did also go and buy my Riding Crop, which is a must, uh, cost about 200 gold. And uh, it feels amazing to fly around. And in this video, guys, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So you can learn you know, what methods worked best for me, what worked, uh, what didn't work, what was a waste of time, so that you can get your Epic Flying Mount if you haven't gotten it already. And I have to tell you guys, this thing is amazing. It is game changing. I, I'd say it's a must to truly enjoy all the things that World of Warcraft has to offer in the Burning Crusade. Having an epic flying mount makes that just so much more enjoyable. And oh my gosh, especially if you have a gathering profession, having this epic flying mount is incredible. Like, core, oh my gosh, a star of a loon. Oh my gosh, that's the first time I've gotten a uh, blue gem from mine. You guys saw it here. This was the first time. Um, so it's it's super helpful to have an epic flying mount if you have, especially if you're herbalist, if you are uh, mining, or if you are also um, an engineer to go around and gather those uh, moat clouds for uh, gathering moats. So in this video, guys, I'm going to show you guys how I did it. And I'm going to show you guys very in-depth analysis of all the sources of gold. You're not going to want to miss it. If you like what uh, you see, don't forget to like. If you want more like it, don't forget to subscribe. And with that said, let's begin. All right, guys, so I put together this presentation to show you guys all the sources of gold that contributed to my 5,200 gold in order to learn the epic flying skill and then buy the mount. So as you can see here, it looks like cloth really contributed the most gold to me, you know, getting uh, my epic flying mount. You can see there on the left hand side, it did contribute about 1,400 gold. And this is mainly because I am a tailor, and this gave me access to things like shadow cloth, moon cloth, as well as uh, spell cloth. These all sell for hundreds of gold each, and uh, you get to specialize in one of them, which will give you two of each cloth. So really, you know, sort of the boring answer is professions, but if you look a little deeper, for me, it was tailoring that really helped me uh, actually uh, get there, and uh, it's going to continue to be a source of gold as I continue to make those cloths. Surprisingly, vendoring items actually contributed nearly a thousand gold as well to my 5,000 gold total goal. Vendoring things like gear that's soul bound from quests or things that, um, you know, I replaced uh, from classic vanilla WoW, certain epics that simply were not as good anymore. All of that contributed. Um, vendoring, vendor trash, of course, grays. Uh, there's a nice add on that can uh, help you decide which item to choose uh, amongst the quest rewards in case one of them, in case none of them are an upgrade. Uh, which one will sell for the most, and that add-on is called Pawn. Uh, I kind of like it. also tells you which gear is an upgrade for you, so I recommend that add-on for you to help make that vendoring decision. Now, this is where, uh, of course, I always have the most fun. I want to talk about recipes, patterns, formulas, and designs. Now, if you've seen my previous two videos, I know I've been talking about making gold a lot, but it's been on my mind pushing for that 5,000 gold. But really, reselling was a huge part of how I got my Epic Flying Mount. And it doesn't work for everyone, but it has worked incredibly well for me on my server selling recipes, patterns, formulas, and designs that you can purchase from vendors, whether that's Booty Bay or Silithus or Hellfire Peninsula, they have repeatedly contributed to my 5,000 gold. You can see each one has contributed, you know, recipes alone, about 900 gold, patterns, about, you know, 800, formulas, you know, around 600, huge contributions towards that 5,000 simply from reselling. And I was pretty committed, guys. I logged on every day. I had alts positioned ready to do this. Um, of course, some recipes our BOP that was changed in the Burning Crusade Classic, uh, of course we avoid those. And also, to a lesser extent, primals and ore. As you just saw, I'm a mining uh, profession and I definitely mined ore as much as I could. I noticed it was a bit of a steep learning curve. I, I exited Hellfire too soon and I couldn't mine Adamantite for a while, so I definitely passed up of quite a few of those because my skill wasn't high enough. But you can find quite a bit of ore within dungeons as well. So dungeon grinding, 
mining is actually quite an effective way to start making gold as well. And then, of course, you also get those motes of earth and fire from uh, certain ore, and you can then combine those into primals and sell them. To be honest, guys, I really didn't spend a lot of time farming, per se. I kind of just played the game uh, and, and was smart with, you know, auction house listing pretty much everything I could find. Now, I want to look at things a little bit more in depth uh, so that you can kind of, you know, what what is cloth, right? Well, the top seven sources of cloth for me, well, number one on my server was spell cloth. And here's a learning for you that you could maybe pass on if you're considering going tailoring. Now, I specialized in shadow cloth, right? Um, so that means every time I craft it, I get two. Well, you know, I should have probably done that with spell. I should have been a spell cloth specialization tailor. I'm a warlock, you know. Yeah, I just listened to, you know, what I what I know and whatever, and um, I went shadow cloth tailoring. But really, I should have gone spell cloth tailoring if I was optimizing for gold, because each spell cloth typically went for around, like, 170, almost 200 gold, whereas shadow cloth was going for maybe, I don't know, 120, 150, something like that. Less is, is the point, right? Um, so really, if I was optimizing for gold, I'd be a spell cloth specialization. However, you know, I could switch, but it's 150 gold to switch. So I don't know, it's kind of, you're kind of better off just choosing the right one from the get go. Um, so there you go. Spellcloth sold the most for me on my server, then Shadowcloth, because I got two of them each, and then Primal Mooncloth, which coincidentally was actually the one that was selling for the cheapest, typically under 100 gold each time. Now, it's uh, interesting, you know, I was using the, the filter cloth, right, the keyword, to filter my results. Um, and so it's we're getting some patterns in this, but, um, you know, the pattern enchanted rune cloth bag, I hyped up a lot in my previous videos, and for good reason. It contributed nearly 200 gold uh, to my top sources of gold here, and that's the one from Silithus. And the uh, pattern shadow cloth, pattern, uh, pattern spell cloth, both definitely sold quite a bit, probably more than this since, you know, I've collected a lot of gold today. Um, but those, those patterns are also available to buy in Shatrath City. Now let's take a detailed look at some of the vendor sources. This one, you know, I don't think is as helpful, um, but still somewhat interesting. As you can see, uh, it didn't really come from a single source, right? When you vendor stuff, um, it's always random crap. It's never a lot of the same thing, right? So you can just see a random collection of stuff, you know, Battle Mage's Baton from the Ring of Blood, you know, I, I vendored it, Staff of Polarities, I vendored it, you know, all these things um, that I vendored for a decent amount of gold. But again, when it comes to vendoring, it's just, there's no single thing, right? It's kind of just uh, an amalgamation of random things. Now let's take a look at top resell items. I think that this is pretty interesting uh, because I love reselling, of course, as you know if you've seen my previous videos. Um, the formula ruined adamantite rod, 200 gold from this. Each purchase, it costs about nine gold and then uh, you know you profit the difference. Um, it's made a ton of money there. The glinting flame specerite, you get, th these are both from Hellfire Peninsula, uh, the black and spore fish. Uh, these are all fantastic recipes. So yeah, these are things that I purchased and then sold and then relisted on the auction house. Again, my last two videos really go into depth about where to get these, but pretty amazing how much gold that you can make if you just kind of relist these over and over. Um, when it comes to primals, the top three sources were primal fire, primal water, and primal earth. Um, again, guys, I really didn't farm primals. Like I really uh, spent pretty much zero time if i saw a fire elemental i would go out of my way to destroy it because i know primal fire sells the most um this is kind of a reflection of my server's prices as well take this with a grain of salt but typically i found primal fire to be the most valuable and then it looks like uh followed by water and earth are the things that sold for me now i do want to show you guys the top sources of ore um, as you can probably guess eternium is going for the most i actually you know, sold the most fell iron, I would say, even though um, adamantite's going for more, it kind of contributed the most. But again, I didn't do a lot of mining leveling up, um, you know, not having an epic flying mount, you're going to have less ore and it's a less effective uh, method to uh, generate gold. So I would say ore is going to become much better once you have an epic flying mount or herbalism or whatever, once you have that epic flying mount. But before then, I wouldn't say it's the greatest use of time. Now, let's look at the top 10 sources of gold. So what works best if you don't have an epic flying mount, right? And you're trying to get to it. Well, for me, tailoring the spell cloth, the shadow cloth were the single most, you know, top items for generating gold. But also the nether weave bag uh, made 323 gold off nether weave bags. I did implement one of my strategies that I highly recommend for you all. And I actually did not undercut 
uh, with my nether weave bags. I figured the demand was so high that I could list it at TSM recommended market price. And I did the exact TSM recommended market price, which was probably like three or four gold higher than the lowest price. And it did take maybe two days or so, or somewhere around there, right? 48 hour auction. It took most of the 48 hour auction time and it did sell for that full market price. I made some really great money off those netherweave bags while I was just leveling tailoring. Um, formula rune to adamantite rod that's a resell and then guys the nexus claw this one i my jaw would just dropped i was like how did this sell how did this sell because i went to the storm spire i saw this guy i think his name's like uh like nether soccer madoon or sadakat he's one of those guys who sells limited supply items right well this is a limited supply green item that you can buy for about 30 gold i bought it for 30 gold and i listed it for about 200 and uh it sold if someone bought the green for 200 gold i got 191 gold of that because the auction house is cut and uh it's one of my top sources of gold believe it or not so you never know what you can resell uh Primal Moon Cloth was effective, and then the Hellfire Peninsula Design, uh, Glinting Flame Spessarite, the Pattern Enchanted Rune Cloth Bag, once again, Silithus, Recipe Black and Sporefish, and the Formula Wizard Oil, like I was saying, guys, it sold pretty much every day. It doesn't sell for a lot, I don't think, but uh, sold for quite a bit uh, over, over time. This is about 30 days worth of data. And now, uh, what I want to do for you guys is I'm going to put a link in the description below and probably the comment section as well. I'm just going to export all of my TSM data. I'm going to put it into a Google Sheet. You guys can basically analyze it however you want in order to determine you know, the best strategy that works for you. Um, so you can, as quick as possible, uh, get your epic flying mount uh, based off these strategies, right? So um, that's for you to use however you like, and uh, hopefully it's helpful. And again, that will be in the description and the comment section below. All right, guys, and before I wrap this video up, I do just want to show you guys pretty much a, uh, you know, TSM view. Let's, you know, exit the PowerPoint. Let's get rid of the slides. Let's just look at what TSM has to say about where my money came from so that you can basically uh, get a different view of it, right? So basically going to go up to here. Uh, again, this is uh, my sort of gold over time. And so you can see, guys, I didn't come into Burning Crusade with a whole lot of gold, you know, 674 gold worked my way up to uh, epic mount in about uh, 20 days so there you go or 21 days all right so let's take a look at the uh, sales in the last 30 days let's look at what sold the most now there is actually one thing i do want to call out right off the bat the brown rabbit crate <laughs> someone bought this for 84 gold um it's it's you know this is uh one of the pets uh my other video is called like five weird gold making tricks that'll make you rich i i mean you know it could work for you it might not i bought this for like 10 gold i think vendor buy price nine gold uh, again, this is Stormspire. You can, there's an exotic creatures vendor. Uh, someone bought this brown rabbit crate because they wanted to have a brown rabbit pet. So uh, you never know. You never know what, what'll sell. Um, so just, just going through some of these things. Again, like the graphs really did a good job of summing this up. Different cloths sold really well. A lot of reselling uh, going on. Uh, greens actually really went pretty well. If, if a green doesn't sell, though, after like a week or two, and it's hard to tell when you're just selling so many greens, but... Um, you know, having a disenchanting alt to, to get rid of them because, you know, it does cost like one or two gold to list these greens uh, and you don't want the auction house fees to eat up uh, a lot of your uh, profit. So keep that in mind as well. Just to, just looking out at it, looking out for you. Um, but yeah, that's this is pretty much the TSM view. You can actually see in the last 30 days I've made like almost 10,000 gold, but you know, there's expenses. Uh, again, that's, that's a nice gold making tip. Try not to, you know, um, level things if you don't have to your trade skills and whatnot um even though i'm a scryer reputation i simply uh went scryer for a couple uh reasons if you look at you know outland and you know i'm a shadow cloth vendor or uh, specialization like you get access to the scryer town so the altar of shadows is so much easier to get to right um so that's one reason why you might want to go scryer if you're also a tailor it really makes uh making that um that cloth a whole lot easier as well as giving you access to those two recipes um i believe it's actually right here imbued netherweave robe and imbued netherweave tunic which boom are selling like crazy 25 gold 23 gold um just some some little tips there uh, I hope this was helpful, guys. If it was, uh, don't forget to give the video a like. Uh, if you want more uh, World of Warcraft content like this, don't forget to subscribe. My name is Toy House, and I'll see you in the next video.